you can start now. Ah, okay. So my name is Andrey Pavlov, and today I will give you a talk about the Minimax strategy in approximate waste and PC. This talk is based on previously published work by me, Iman Shames, and Chris Manzi. Uh, let's start with a short motivation. Why do we bother about MPC? Because this is a nice way with just little pre-computation to provide an optimal model-wise control with constraint satisfaction guarantees. However, this is often, often is problematic in practice because optimization algorithms are generally iterative algorithms and the solution is obtained iteratively. This often is a computational challenge. This is where the idea of explicit MPC came, came from in an attempt to alleviate the computational difficulties arising from MPC control. The idea is based on pre-computing the optimal control law, which then becomes cheap to evaluate. However, the problem itself is a multiparametric problem, which is hard to solve and usually has some limitations. For example, you are limited to linear or quadratic cost functions and convex polyhedra as inequality constraints. Explicit solution, which you obtain by solving the multiparametric problem, is also need to be stored, which means huge huge memory requirements and effectively navigated through. This is why we <clears throat> consider approximate explicit MPC as a possible remedy. This allows us to re relax requirements on the MPC problem so we can use general purpose convex cost functions. This also provides a nice way to, to balance between complexity and a level of suboptimality, which means reduced computational requirements. Uh, so, this talk will be given in three parts. We will start with a short background in model predictive control, then we will go to the idea of explicit NPC and finish with approximate explicit NPC. Then we will consider the set of tools we will be using throughout the, this talk. And finally, we will go straight to results, which are the Minimax certificate, anisotropic partitioning strategy, and we will compare uh, these methods to the existing ones by numerical tests and comparisons. And in the end, we will have a video of practical implementation. So let's consider a regulation problem. We have a linear dynamical system with a convex and differentiable stage costs, which is zero at the origin. We also have convex constraints of a, diff uh, of a general kind which contains the origin. And let's assume that the terminal cost and terminal set is, are chosen appropriately, so they can provide closed loop stability and request a feasibility for the system. The MPC problem is formulated as follows. We are trying to find a set of states and controls which will minimize the objective cost and satisfy the dynamics and inherit state and input constraints. We also have a terminal constraint and terminal cost. So the idea of model predictive control is to solve this optimization problem with a new initial condi condition, which is the current state X at every time step. Three main concerns which arise from the MPC control are the cost of feasibility, which is the feasibility of system, or the feasibility of the problem along the closed loop trajectory but it turns out that it's guaranteed by design if we choose terminal cost and terminal set appropriately. Closed loop stability is also given by design because J star X is a Lapinov function. So the only real challenge now becomes a real time implementation. As I mentioned before, numerical solution is an iterative process which might take a lot of time to, to, to compute the optimal solution. This is why we might use the ideas of explicit MPC. We consider the same MPC problem, but now we as a multiparametric problem parameterized in current state X. We have the following theorem. If the stage cost and the terminal cost are quadratic convex functions with uh, positive definite cost matrices, and inequality constraints are a set of convex polyhedra, 
then the optimal cost function is continuous, convex, and piecewise quadratic in state. Also, the optimal control function is continuous and piecewise affine on a set of convex polyhedra. This set of convex polyhedra is often called critical regions. So the idea of explicit NPC is to characterize this set of convex polyhedra, and for each region, we can find an explicit solution as a linear function of x. This is why you are limited to quadratic functions and sets being convex polyhedra, because uh, only in this case, the optimal solution is the linear function in x. Here how it looks in practice. Let's consider a problem of uh, controlling two-dimensional system with one input. We can try to characterize all critical regions where, where uh, a certain inequality constraints are active while other are inactive. As you can see, the shapes of these regions might be <coughs> quite arbitrary. Uh, oriented to access. After we enumerated all critical regions and characterized the solution for, for these regions, we have uh, explicitly defined optimal control law for each region. The online part of explicit NPC becomes solving a point location problem and evaluating the explicit control law. The point location problem is a problem of finding a region of state space where which contains the current state. Let's assume we're given with a set of regions. We have to evaluate its boundaries to roll out all possibilities, to rule out all the critical regions which does not contain the current state until we uniquely determine one, one region where we know that the optimal solution is the linear function of x. So after the region is determined, this is quite cheap to evaluate. As you might guess, in a high dimensional case, this might be quite problematic. In fact, this is a bottleneck of explicit NPC. I should also, also mention that you have to store all these boundaries for these critical regions. Let me remind you what we originally fighting for. When we went from MPC to explicit MPC, we were, try, we were trying to avoid the need of solving the complicated optimization problem at every time step. However, now we also want to avoid solving a large scale multi-parametric multi problem as we do in explicit MPC. Also, we want to avoid the need to solve complex point location problem which is generated by explicit NPC. So we want to simplify this problem somehow. And we want to reduce memory requirements for storing the solution. This means we also want to uh, simplify the boundaries of critical regions. Also, we want to preserve the following properties, which are recursive feasibility and close stability given by the model predictive control problem formulation. Uh, let's consider approximate explicit NPC in the same way as we did it for explicit NPC. Now we have two parts. One is offline part, another is online part. During the offline part, we want to sample the optimal control law for some region of the state space. Then we interpolate this optimal control law between the sample points. And then we want to ensure that the system is still closed loop stable uh, under this interpolated control control law. If we cannot ensure the closed loop stability, we need to sample more points until the interpolated control law provides closed loop stability. During the online part, we also find a region which contains the current state and evaluates interpolation. Let's consider how recursive feasibility can be guaranteed in the framework of approximate explicit NPC. Interpolation is defined as a weighted sum uh, of sampled points for the optimal control law. These coefficients are not uniquely defined. In fact, they should be functions of X. 
So how do we generate these coefficients? It turns out that barycentric functions are a very nice candidate for this purpose. Uh, any set of functions for a given set of points is called barycentric if they satisfy three properties. They should have interpolating property, which is a weighted sum of su some a weighted sum of sample points should give you the current state x. They should sum up to one and they should be non-negative. As you can see, the last two properties are directly related to co convex combination property. If we compute the optimal control for some system states, vi dot 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 vm, and approximate the solution by barycentric interpolation using the barycentric functions, the control law remains feasible as it is a convex combination of feasible points, and by assumptions, our constraints were convex. It is recursively feasible if the system stays inside the convex hull of these points. Let's consider how stability is ensured in approximate explicit NPC. We have a general theorem. If a feasible suboptimal solution satisfies the following property, which is suboptimal cost is bounded by optimal cost plus a fraction of the stage cost, where gamma belongs to the following set, to the following interval, then the optimal, uh, then the control law preserves stability. We can provide a stability test for our interpolation using the following expression. Let's consider the property arising from using the barocentric functions, which is the suboptimal cost function in the in the interior on the convex hull can be bounded by a weighted sum of the optimal cost function evaluated at the vertices of this uh, convex hull. Moreover, the test with the following upper bound can be formulated as optimization problem. We are looking for the worst possible state of system inside this convex hull, which minimizes the following expression. As you can see, if delta is positive, then stability is ensured by satisfying the following expression, by satisfying the following theorem. However, this optimization problem is not a convex problem for a general choice of nonlinear functions omega i. So we have to modify the problem somehow. Let's consider a worst case certificate proposed by Summer Jones, Pegron, and Morari. Define a set of barocentric coordinates as follows. The bound of barocentric function is given by uh, the upper bound provided for a worst possible choice of barocentric coordinates. The worst case test now looks as follows. We're looking for the worst possible choice of state and worst possible choice of barocentric coordinates, which minimizes the following expression. If the optimal cost for the following problem is positive, then for every possible choice of barocentric functions, delta has to be positive. Give me a second. Now let's focus on real-time implementation of approximate explicit NPC. To be better than explicit NPC, we have to decrease the computational complexity by simplifying the problem location problem. See how it was looking for explicit NPC? We want to simplify it by aligning the regions, these critical regions, with access. So the problem might be very simple. You have to store only scalars to determine the boundaries of these regions. And point location problem for this uh, partition is very simple. We also want to decrease storage requirements by <coughs> generating as, as, as small number as possible of these regions. So the answer becomes orthogonal partitioning. 
we have hypercubes in the general case which are aligned with axis. This generates a very simple decision tree where centric functions become very cheap to evaluate. At least there are some expressions for very centric functions. And this provides very efficient storage based on a hierarchical representation, which means uh, you have to address only smaller hypercubes if only when you enter a higher uh, a higher lying uh, hypercube. Uh, let's conclude with the existing approach in explicit NPC. This was published by Summer Jones, Ligeros, and Parari in uh, 2011. They use the worst case stability certification provided by this optimization problem. They partition each hypercube if delta is negative into smaller hypercubes, and then they use and appropriate barycentric functions for these hypercubes. However, this is quite a conservative approach because there is no connection be between the worst case certificates they use and chosen barycentric functions, which means that you certify stability for any possible choice of barycentric functions, even for the worst one. And then you use only one set of barycentric functions. Excessive partitions are expected because the stability, minim the stability margin delta was minimized on purpose. Let's consider a very simple example. We have double integrator with input and state constraints. Here how the feasibility region looks like. We have an, a box which can fully contains the feasibility region, and we try to solve the optimization problem for each vertice, uh, for each of the vertices of the hypercube. As you can see, some of these vertices lies outside the feasibility region. So you have to subdivide the hypercube into smaller ones until the hypercube is fully contained inside the feasibility region, so you can compute delta. After the specific after the certification procedure is complete, you can observe the following picture. Uh, two problems are arising in here. The first one is relevant to boundaries. As you can see, we are trying to approximate the boundaries and it will take infinitely many hypercubes. So some kind of relaxation should be considered when a small hypercube lies right on the boundary. Another problem is uh, happens inside the feasibility region. For example, see this hypercube, even when it lies inside the feasibility region, it was further subdivided into smaller hypercubes. So we want to address this issue somehow. In the search of new certification procedure, we formulate the following problem. We want to reduce the number of regions in approximate explicit NPC to make it more computationally tractable by providing a new certification procedure and corresponding to this certification procedure barycentric functions. We also want to extend the orthogonal partitioning strategy to avoid uh, unnecessary partitions. Note that we will stick to barycentric functions as we want to ensure recursive feasibility. Let's consider the worst case certificate and see what we can modify in here. Previously, we were minimizing this expression, the stability margin, on purpose. Let's now force the margin to be as positive as possible by changing mean operate, operator to max operator. Uh, this delta, second delta, should be greater or equal than the first delta. This problem is equivalent to the following optimization problem where we have an inner optimization problem. As you can see, this is not a convex test anymore because this linear program generates a convex function as its optimal objective function. So in fact, we have minimization of the difference between two convex functions. But it's still possible to compute exactly 
by considering the critical regions of the inner optimization problem. Let's focus on this problem. Let's treat the optimal objective function for this problem as function fx. This is a multiparametric linear program, so we can use the same trick as we did in explicit NPC. And as you can see, it's quite small scale because it has no constraints except the constraints given by a set of barocentric coordinates. A solution to this problem for a given x will also give barocentric coordinates of interest. So see how this test is related to barocentric coordinates that we will use in online phase. This function fx is continuous and piecewise affine. By characterizing all critical regions of this multiparametric linear program, we can subdivide the hypercube or any arbitrarily convex hull v into disjoint convex polyhedra. In each critical region, we compute an optimal solution given by a linear function in x. Then we certified we certify all critical regions for a given convex hull v, which might be a hypercube, with the following convex stability test. There are finitely many of these problems for each v. And there is no need to keep these critical regions after the certification is completed. The certification for hypercube, let's say, is completed once we certified all critical regions inside the hypercube. Now let's go to the partitioning strategy. The vanilla strategy was to subdivide each hypercube for, for, with negative delta into to the, to the power of n smaller hypercubes. Uh, however, this strategy suffers from cost of dimensionality. As you can see, it provides uh, an exponential growth in n. Now let's consider for illustrative purposes quadratic function in state. As you remember, the optimal cost function for the MPC problem is given by piecewise quadratic function. And inside critical region, this is just quadratic function. And our certificate was an optimization problem, uh, optimizing the difference between convex function and its piecewise linear approximation. As you can see, this quadratic function might have directions of different, different curvature. It sounds meaningful to pick a direction of the greatest curvature to make partitions along. However, as we are restricted to orthogonal partitioning strategy, we might consider a different way. Note that the Hessian is the thing which is responsible for deviation from being affine. So let's try to estimate the Hessian in the center of hypercube. We can do that because we have insensitivity information by solving the MPC problem for vertices. Using these derivatives, we can estimate the diagonal elements of the Hessian. And then we choose an axis with the largest element of the diagonal uh, of the Hessian and do partition only along this axis. So in fact, we partition a happy group into two hyper rectangles. Along the axis with greatest curvature. Here how numerical tests look like. We have two different modifications we made. So let's consider the, the vanilla worst case certification procedure with uh, orthogonal partitioning strategy. As you can see, this provides an exponential growth of the number of certified hypercubes in the system dimensionality. By the way, the systems were generated randomly uh, for different of, of different dimensions, and the partitioning. We, we do partition only of uh, a happy group of unit size. Exponential growth on the logarithmic scale, this is definitely curse of dimensionality. When we replace the vanilla partitioning strategy with anisotropic partitioning strategy, 
this behaves more like a linear function, which means exactly exponential growth. And if we use both two modification we, modifications we provided, this is what we're doing, a neurotrophic minimax strategy. This behaves more like a sublinear function on logarithmic scale. So in fact, this is sub-exponential growth in system dimensionality. You can compare, like here we have 10 to the power of five, and for what we're doing, we have less than 10 to the power of three. So these are two orders of difference. The practical implementation. Uh, let me, give me a second, I will pause the video. Ah. Oh, oh. Ah. Something really weird happened. Yeah. So in in the chat you can find a link. Let's return back to the practical implementation. Let's consider a two-wheeled robot which tries to balance itself and certify the region of state space of interest to provide an approximate explicit optimal control law for. In total, it took uh, around 24,000 of hypercubes to certify the control for this robot and the linear programs to compute the bar center coordinates of interest are solved at 100 hertz on a cheap microcontroller. As, it, as you can see for the measurements, it was able to recover from an impact happened at time equals approximately 10. And it coincides quite well with simulation. Yeah, so let's do a summary for minimax strategy. During the offline processing, we partition the state space into hypercubes. We solve the MPC problem for each of these vertices of these hypercubes. Then we perform minimax stability test for all the hypercubes, which involves computing the bars, uh, involves solving the multiparametric linear program to compute the critical regions for hypercube and uh, certifying all of them. And then we continue to partition hypercubes until all of them are certified. For the online part, we solve the point location problem to find a hypercube which contains the current system state. We compute the barocentric coordinates of interest by solving a small scale linear program, which remains computationally tractable. And note that the stability was certified only for this choice of barocentric coordinates. So you have to use them. And then we compute a control law as a weighted sum. Conclusions. By using minimax certification and anisotropic partitioning, you can ablate the curves of dimensionality often arising in approximate explicit PC. So it results in a reduced storage requirements. All extra computational efforts are in certification procedure. It involves solving small scale multiparametric problem. It's not a large scale multiparametric problem we used to face in explicit PC and multiple instances of convex optimization problem for computing delta. And for the online stage, we have to stick to barocentric coordinates uh, given by solving the, given by solution of the linear optimization problem. And because it is a small scale linear program, it remains computationally tractable. Yep, that's, that's it. If you have any questions, I'm glad to hear it. Thanks, Andre. So if there is any question for Andre. OK, if there is no questions for Andre, let's thank him again. And I see everyone next week again, hopefully. Uh, please email him if you want to discuss anything about this tool. Thanks, Andre. Yeah.
Yeah, thank you for your attention.